CataractCoach.com, checking for hidden cortex. Caps or bag looks clean, but look here under the iris. There's some hidden lens material. And post-op day one could look like this. So we need to prevent that from happening. Let me show you this case. It's a routine cataract case and a patient who takes Flomax or Tamsulosin. And that can lead to this smaller pupil, floppy iris syndrome, etc. So we did a nice capsulorexis, a little bit larger than the pupil. About a four and a half millimeter pupil now and about a five and a half millimeter rexis. We hydrodissect and bring this nucleus partially out of the capsular bag. Now it's less than halfway out of the capsular bag, but that's sufficient to hold the nucleus in place. And also the nucleus itself holds the pupil open, holds the iris away and prevents that iris from coming near our phaco probe. So we solve the issue of the floppy iris as well. Now we'll put the phaco probe in the eye and we're gonna do a chop technique here. So here comes our chopper. We can buzz into the center of the nucleus, go around the equator, and break off a piece. And there we go. We got there a hemi-nucleus, a little bit less than half of the size, and we can emulsify this just about at the iris plane. Now, fortunately, this is not too dense of a cataract, and this is going to be uh, emulsified relatively quickly. Once that piece is gone, we'll go into the second half, bring it partially up out of the capsule bag, and emulsify it as well. And you can see the nucleus is really doing a good job of staying stationary because the iris is holding it. And it's also keeping the pupil expanded. The nucleus is holding the pupil open and keeping the iris pushed back. So now we will attack that second half of the nucleus. Here it goes, coming up through the pupil. And it's very easy to stay centrally and work in this small little zone and not move the phaco probe too much. You see there's a paucity of movements. We stay right there in the center and we don't need to move around the eye so much. And once we emulsify all of the remaining nuclear pieces, we can see the capsular bag looks great. So now just some cortex remaining. Again, the chopper's in the safety or protective position to make sure the capsular bag does not come forwards. Now the pupils become a little bit smaller, probably about four millimeters, maybe even three and a half millimeters at this point. But we can still proceed with the case normally. We don't need to use iris hooks or a pupil expansion ring. We can instead put the eye probe in the eye, a little bit of an expansion there from the infusion pressure, and now going under the iris to remove all the lens cortex. So we go in a circumferential manner. So we don't want to miss too many spots. We want to start in one direction, go around, and make sure we remove the cortex for 360 degrees. And this looks great, removing all of it. And you can tell, of course, from the introduction picture in this video that we're going to have a residual or hidden piece of cortex. I'm going to show that to you. So it looks like a totally clear and empty capsule bag, double checking all the areas. Everything looks pretty good here. Well, of course, we can't directly see behind the iris, so it's hard to tell for sure. So now what we can do is we can fill our capsule bag with our cohesive viscoelastic. And there we see a little bit of cortex hidden there in that one corner top left from your view at about the 11 o'clock position. And so we know we'll have to check there at the end. We'll put the lens in the capsule bag. Now sometimes putting the lens in the bag and then rotating it helps to stir up any attached lens material that's at the capsule bag equator. So there's delivering the eye well, making sure it goes completely in the capsule bag and the haptics unfold, and we can rotate this around. And now this is a good time to lift the iris and check there, there's all that lens cortex. And we can do this for 360 degrees. Use the chopper, lift it up, that looks good. We can ensure that there's no residual lens material, maybe a little bit on this side. Let's double check that again. A uh, tiny bit, not too bad. We can get that. We also can see that the eye well optic is completely behind our capsular axis. So now we know it's primarily that one spot. So let's put the IA probe back in the eye and remove the one little bit here. And then there's a larger piece that's going to be under the iris here in the top left, about your 11 o'clock position. Now we can use the chopper here to help us, two-handed technique. Chopper lifting up the iris to give us a view, and then we can go under there. And there's that last residual piece also from the right and now everything looks clean. We can use this chopper again to look around and make sure everything's good. Now let's go under the eye wall optic to remove the rest of the viscoelastic from the capsule bag. 
and then we can finish up the case here. Now you see the pupil has become even smaller. Now we're pretty much at about a three, maybe three and a half millimeter pupil. But still the case can proceed normally. And the big advantage you have here is you have a more efficient case, which is less traumatic. Notice there's no damage to the iris. Putting in iris hooks or putting in a capsular, I mean a pupil expansion ring, will damage the pupil margin for sure. But in this case, we've avoided that. So we'll hide it up our incisions. And then the last bit here, we can actually go in through the side port once the main incision is sealed and sweep around and inject just to make sure we don't have anything left. Going above the iris, also injecting under the iris just to make sure. And that looks great. Thank you for watching.